Hey everyone, it's George Kuros with another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. And I am actually recording this on September 16th. It's a Wednesday. We're through the middle of the month. And I'm sure that many of you are feeling exhausted and overwhelmed. And I know how complicated uh, this year is for those that are in education. And I've had tons of conversations with educators across the world and feeling that uncertainty and, and struggle. And, and no matter what type of learning environment you're in right now, you're learning something new. You're doing something totally different uh, from what you're doing last year. So even if you're in a face-to-face -face setting and you started to the 2019-2020 school year in a face-to-face -face setting, it probably looks a lot different. And the things that um, we're having to go through in education right now are quite complicated. And so first of all, thank you. Uh, Cause I know how hard it is to learn new things, but I can't even imagine um, how complicated it is for so many schools doing so many different things. So I just wanna take a moment to thank you and tell you as not only an educator, but as a parent, how much I appreciate the work that you do in education every day. And I just wanted to share some thoughts on kind of that struggle um, that we have with learning and can cannot even come close to um, kind of empathizing as much as I tried, you know, what a lot of educators are going through, but kind of like what happens when we struggle with new learning in, in different facets and at different levels. And currently I'm about to start teaching a course, a couple of university courses this year, and it's new for me. I've never done it before. And I know that it's not even close to what some people are going through, but I, I feel really stressed about it. I feel um, overwhelmed. I, I'm having trouble sleeping. I'm dreaming about things that I could do, things that I don't know how to do. And I really started to notice how stressed I get when something new is, is coming my way and I'm trying something different and how I have a lot of trouble sleeping. And I think I notice it because I have two young children. And I notice, especially with Kalia, who uh, she's almost uh, five years old, that when she was learning to walk, she couldn't sleep. When she was potty training, she was having trouble sleeping. Little things that I've seen as big moments in her life she was struggling and you could see even stress um, through that process, you know, and I, and, and I, I correlate it to the two and I don't have scientific evidence to back it up, but I just noticed that when she's trying something new and I, we're noticing it with Georgia as well, is that when Georgia is, um, you know, she's starting to sit up now and she's starting to do little things and she's not sleeping as well as she once was. And I started to realize that I have that too in some capacity when I'm trying something new how much I struggle. And I started to think about this. And I look back at a post I wrote in 2019 about uh, podcasting. And now I've been podcasting almost a year now. And I'm much more comfortable with it. I don't get hung up on maybe saying words too often, uh, even though I still despise it. And I want this to be as perfect as possible. But I know perfection is not attainable. But progress is something that we always strive for. And I was looking back at that post because I was thinking about it in context of what I'm doing with teaching a, a new university course and, and kind of how often what we do is we, we talk about sharing learning, but we talk about the product, but not the process and how the process is going up and down and it's messy and it's complicated and we struggle with it. And I think for me, one of the terms that I've started shifting in, in my teaching is the difference between, and I'm sure most of you are familiar, uh, when you're in school, when especially in math, we'd say like, hey, you need to show your work. And what I've been trying to shift is like, hey, you need to show your thinking. And sometimes our thinking is the struggle. Sometimes our thinking is the complication. Sometimes our thinking is the falling down. And often we just kind of show the, 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 the easy steps to get to a process. We don't kind of share the ups and downs. And I think really when we talk about modeling our learning, that's 
important to understand how much a lot of this new stuff is a struggle. And I think it helps us empathize better with others. It helps us better empathize with our students who come to our classrooms and struggle with things. And what we might have taught year after year after year, uh, we forget is something new to somebody else. And they struggle and they feel complicated and they feel anxiety. They feel um, insecure about it. I know as a student, the teachers that I tend to um, cause the most issues with when I was in elementary and high school were in the subjects where I had the hardest time understanding the content, understanding the concepts. And my feeling, and I didn't understand it then, was, hey, I'd rather be a class clown and be considered funny than to look stupid. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mask some of these issues um, through that process. But I think when we understand our students struggle because we kind of can share that struggle as well. It not only makes us more empathetic to our students, but it gives us a better understanding of how we can navigate that. And it also models to our students that not, not everything comes easy to us either, that we struggle with these things. I think as an adult, we want to share like, Hey, no, we're good. Like, you know, things turn out all right. Sometimes um, we got to figure out, you know, what are some of the steps that we need to take to redirect to get better. And when I was looking at this, uh, old blog posts, I fell upon this David Trust quote that I shared. David's a good friend of mine um, from the, the BC area. He's an administrator there. And he shared this. At school, I watch perfectionism crush students. It completely overwhelms and debilitates them. It's sad to see highly capable students buried under the weight of something not being good enough to hand in. When while it may not be the best work, it is actually good enough. Last year is actually challenging a student to hand in some mediocre work. What's the minimum you need to do to hand that in? Don't get me wrong. There are times when I push students to do more and give their best. But for some students, the bar of excellence they place on their own work is so high. They are continuously challenged to attain their own high standards. And when that bar is placed on everything that do, they do, that becomes an impossible task. And I thought about this quote in my expectations for myself when I'm giving of others. When I create a course, I want it to be not a good course. I want it to be the best course that people have taken. And thinking about that in the context of many educators who have set a standard for themselves year after year after year, and then COVID comes along and they still want that to be the greatest experience ever. But then we know that there's all these complications that make it really hard. And I, I'm not a big believer in the idea of like just doing mediocre work, but I also realize that there are complications in our learning that make it hard to, to sometimes live up to our own standards. And as I'm going through a process where I'm trying to lose weight and trying to get better, what is the goal for me and what keeps me going and what gets me excited is not the, the end goal, which I do have in mind, to be honest with you, it's the progress, it's the growth through it. And I think sometimes we get so frustrated because we are focused on the end goal. We are focused on there and we want to get to that point immediately. But what we got to recognize are the steps, the steps that we take every day to get better, to grow through this process. And when we document them and we highlight them, when we talk about the struggles, it's really interesting to look back on that post talking about how much I struggle with the podcast and how seemingly it doesn't seem to matter as much anymore because it's something that I'm doing, but have I been documenting and watching that process unfold? Can I look back on that and say like, Hey, I'm, I'm getting better at this. I'm, I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to help other people and hopefully people are finding the value in this stuff. And when we hold ourselves to the standard of perfection, and there's one that we can't live up to, but when we hold ourselves to a standard of growth, a standard of development, it's something that shows us results each day. It's something that helps us aspire to continue to get better. And I think when we set the bar so high and we try to jump from A to Z, we often are, are disappointed when we only get to C or D. But when we realize that step from A to B and B to C, C to D are really important steps in our progress and that we're growing. That's something that's really good for us. But also I think it's a reminder how important that is for our students 
we see our kids every single day in our classrooms. And sometimes you get really frustrated. We don't see immediate growth when they don't get to a point that, you know, we hope they'd be to at that point. But if we stop and just look at how they've grown from two, three, four days, weeks ago, and realizing that growth is the goal, progression is the goal, then we start to celebrate those moments. And it actually surprisingly helps us get better. So I've just something I've been thinking about as I'm looking at this. And there's a couple of things that I wrote in this original post from 2019 that really try to help me with this process. And the first one is it is good to struggle because it is pushing me out of my comfort zone. Struggle is not a bad thing. Struggle is something that we should look to. It's not something I want every single day, right? But it is something that we should look at because when we know we struggle, we get better. The second one is modeling the struggle that might be helpful to someone else who's going through the same thing or something similar. I think for me, I try to share when I'm having issues with things, not to gain sympathy, not to um, necessarily get a, a cheering section, but to know that, hey, you might see one thing from me, you might see some of the things I've done in my career, but I want to make sure you understand that I'm struggling with things, that I have a hard time, and that people will reach out to me and say, thank you for that. Um, I, I posted recently about my struggles with weight loss and how hard it is for me to get at a point where I feel healthy and I'm happy with my weight. And the amount of email I received thanking me for sharing that struggle because people had done that was something that was, imp was really valuable to me, but I know that it gave people hope that, yeah, like we, we fall down sometimes, but, and I watch other people and they seem to just have it all together, but they're struggling just as much. And so I think sharing those stories helps us to connect and helps people see that, yes, they're falling, but they can still grow through this process. And the last one that I share is that if I stick with what I'm learning now, uh, it's going to get better over time. Uh, playing guitar, right? Terrible at first, slowly getting better, slowly getting better. And I'm enjoying it now. Uh, singing is a totally different thing. I don't know if that's ever going to get better, but playing guitar might be better. Um, I'm seeing progression in my health which I'm really happy about, where I'd always get frustrated with the goal and I'm trying to embrace the learning. And so just some final thoughts as, you, as, as I share these ideas. I know that it's really hard, um, some of the learning that's happening this year, I get that. But just stop and recognize how much better you've got in that space, that what you're doing today is probably what you, better than what you're doing a week ago. And probably way better than what you're doing, you know, a month ago. Uh, I joke, you know, as I, as I, you know, do keynotes and travel. And that was something I did for all the time. I say to people that, you know, March Zoom George, it was terrible compared to September Zoom George. And I hopefully in December, I'll be, you know, better at the work that I'm doing at that time. We have to stop and recognize and embrace the discomfort and realize that we've got better. So just some random thoughts that I want to share with you as I'm thinking about some of my growth over time. And I hope this resonates with some of you. I hope you have a wonderful day. And seriously, I know I say this all the time, but thank you for all you do. I know how hard this work is and, and I just commend all the educators doing an incredible job where kids not only feel safe, but they feel welcome. They feel um, excited about school every day because I know that what kids see um, or what they, they feel, they don't realize all the work that has gone into it to create those conditions um, by so many amazing educators all over the world. So thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day. Again, thank you for all you do. Take care.